Cleveland IndyCar Grand Prix on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Firestone, America's tire since 1900. Split Fire, enter the performance zone with Split Fire Performance B spark plug. And Budweiser, official sponsor of the 1996 U.S. Olympic team. This Bud's for you. Front Airport, no changes the order. Paul Tracy is running same as his number. He's in third place behind the Ganassi cars. And Tracy started eighth, moving up to third. Jack Aroot, why? Well, it was a terrific start for Paul Tracy, but probably more importantly was the start by the front row, Paul. And that was a call that was made by Chip Ganassi before the start of the race. He privately took both of his drivers and said, look, Points are extremely important as we watch the replay of the start. Points are important for one driver, Jim Vassar. He said to Alex Sonardi, use your head. He turned to Vassar. He said, look, you want to go for points. If Sonardi has the advantage on the start, let him lead. I'll tell you what, there's team orders, Gary Gerald. Sure sounds like it, Jack. A couple of other interesting notes relating to the early laps of this race. Robbie Gordon, who started 14th, is a frustrated race driver. We understand that IndyCar officials are watching him for heavy bottoming, but he was on the radio to his team owner, Derek Walker, complaining that he'd been cut off nearly three times, and Derek was doing his best to try to get him to calm down and settle into a race pace. Remember the problems that Robbie had last year at the end of this race with Michael Andretti. One other quick update, tough break for P.J. Jones. His crew reporting a misfire in the Toyota power plant for Dan Gurney. Robbie Gordon in the battle of number five sits now in 14th place. Let's go to Jill DeFerrin, who is continuing to rest in sixth, but rest is an inappropriate word. He is locked in a battle right now with Brian Herta. Brian Herta's teammate, Bobby Rahal, by the way, started 11th and is now 7th. And Greg Moore started 4th and has fallen all the way back to 10th. So there's DeFerrin. And Chris Herta. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, Paul. One of the things there is Jill DeFerrin's probably not as concerned because you see right in front of those two cars, the car at the left of your screen that just went out of vision, that car is uh, Ribeiro. He's not really getting away from him that much. So he wants to make sure he picks his right spot. And as we see, uh, uh, Brian Hurt is a little quicker in some sections. So you really got to pick and choose where you're going to do this. So DeFerrin continues that pursuit. There's P.J. Jones in the pits with an early on problem. But it, it looks like they're at least going to try and work with it. Well, when you're in a development program, don't forget, and you've got an engine problem, you've got to try to fix it. You can't just put it away on the trailer and go home because you don't know exactly what the problem is. So you want to make sure you try to fix it, if nothing else, and now use the race as a test session. Boy, look at DeFerrin. Close on him under braking, though. He's getting into the corners a lot harder than Herta, but Herta is able to accelerate off of the corners. Sonardi leads it. Vassar second. Paul Tracy third. Fourth is Andre Ribeiro. Nothing changes there. We're focusing on the battle between Brian Herta and Jill DeFerrin, and that's a battle for the fifth position. Very hot out here. Very humid. You add to that the roughness of the course. For these drivers, it's going to be a long day. Well, that's right. That's a, a very good point. These guys are in good physical condition. A lot of them work out. They, they maintain a workout program. They're in good shape. But they realize this is a long, hard race. It's physical, it's hot, and they really want to pace themselves to get toward the end. Don't forget, we're also in a point situation. We're getting toward, you know, six races to go in the season. These guys want to score points. They don't want to give it away early on. Championship so very important. Greg Moore started fourth, fell back to tenth. Gary Gerald, does he have a problem? Crew says he does not have a problem, Paul. Tony Brunetti said we wanted to take a very conservative stance. We definitely wanted to make sure that we got through turn number one. So they played it very cautious. As a consequence, he lost position. They say the car is working fine. They are not concerned. Just ahead of Greg Moore, you get a glimpse from time to time of Michael Andretti. Now we're on board with Michael. That's Fernandez just ahead. Good comparison of power plants here. Honda power plant up there in Fernandez's car. Michael is carrying, of course, the Ford Cosworth, which has such a great string of victories to its credit. And of course, right behind him is, is uh, Greg Moore with a Mercedes power. 
Let's go down pit side, Jack and Ruth. Well, let's keep you abreast of what the heat is like down here, guys. We did a track temperature just before the start of the race. It was 125 degrees. The readouts we're getting now, it's jumped already by 5 degrees. Now, for the crew members, it's not too bad because there's a brief freeze. It's not quite as hot as, let's say, Rio, where we had inside suit temperatures of 140 degrees plus. But it is still very hot, and I would think, Danny Sullivan, that would come into play in terms of tire conservation as well with this very abrasive racing surface it is jack but one thing that we've seen the times are a little bit down from last year and i think that reduction in downforce has hurt the car so they're probably not going through the corners quite as quick but everything here brakes tires and your energy is going to be conserved toward the end of the race that's when all the action seems to have happened in the years past Greg Moore, from time to time, can close on Michael Andretti. Doesn't seem to be able to get around him. You saw also lying back just a few cars back was the uh, car of T.J. Jones. Apparently, they've got it back on course, but still, he is now well off the pace. Let's go up forward in the field on board Jimmy Vassar now as he tries to uh, chase down his teammate, last week's winner, Alex Zanardi, and look at the interval that Zanardi has been able to pull out in just 13 laps here at the Berg Lakefront Airport in Cleveland, round 16 of the IndyCar Series. We're back in Ohio for the Cleveland IndyCar Grand Prix at the Berg Lakefront Airport as we watch Andre Ribeiro. He has, uh, he has been battling back and forth and Jill DeFerrin was finally able to get around Brian Herta, Danny. Yes, it uh, looked like he was waiting a little bit. Here we have a replay. This is him going in underneath Oh, and Brian really locks it up, trying to get in there deep and swung out wide. And, of course, that made it an easy pass for Jill, and he's just pulled out. Now, we're going to take a look down through the full field uh, summary for you right now. But if you've become accustomed to the uh, rather constant updating that we have been able to bring you in the past, we can't do that here today, and it's a simple reason. This is an airport. They really don't want people cutting a lot of trenches in the airport so that we could put in the antennas that the EDS system would normally use to sense the passage of the car down the straightaway. So everything is being done manually here as it has been for the 14 previous races here. It's the one track where that exists and the reason seems rather obvious. If you're gonna land here, you'd like everything to be perfectly safe. Looking down from overhead in the Goodyear blimp, the Spirit of Akron, giving us the aerial view of this track. The Goodyear blimp has been flying over major events for over 62 years. Again, the view down, watching Jill DeFerrin now on board. Let's just ride with him for a bit. to the finish of 18 laps now 90 the scheduled distance as we continue to ride right with the battle of DeFerrin and Ribeiro and there is Bozell and he is slow and apparently in trouble boy what a what an up and down terrible year he has had he's just really not been able to do what he would have wanted with that race car no he really had high hopes uh, of going into this team it was a championship team that had won Indianapolis 500 last year with uh, with Jacques Villeneuve, he was really looking forward for an exciting team, and they've just had problems all year long. Team Green, by the way, should be seeing a new sponsorship next year, one that they're using in their Indy Lights team. Whoa, Hero came off the corner and almost got it. As the leader is coming around, you get I a don't think that was Hardy. I'm sorry, Paul, I don't think that that was the... Uh, Whoa, we've got an accident over in the first turn. That's Johansson pulling away, and here's Eddie Lawson with, with heavy, heavy damage to the race car. Boy, the way that um, 
Here's how it happened. Watch Eddie Lawson here in the front. Parker Johnstone moving to the inside. Goes in. Closes the door. And then Parker ran over his right front with his right rear. And that's why you see that right front folded under. It wasn't that bad of an accident until they uh, uh, ran over each other. So Parker and Eddie Lawson get together. And Parker Johnstone, there you see him, the Motorola car, went right through the shortcut. Apparently he wants to get back just as fast as he can, find out what damage he has. Looking at the fronts, actually they're, they're cambered a bit, but it's very difficult to tell if that isn't normal for a road course, but it does look like a spread on the toe. Gary Gerald? Quick report on Raul Boisel. He comes in and they've shut the engine down. They're working with gear throttle linkage, and apparently the throttle stuck. I can't imagine anything that could be worse for a race driver, especially on a wide open circuit like this. Yeah, and the lake just a few feet away in some places. Maybe it's hot enough he was thinking, ah, oh, we'll let it stick, hit the lake, have a little refreshing time. I don't here. think it's, so. <laughs> no, I don't either. Later into the pits as we go to full course yellow, Jackaroot. Well, this is a little earlier than this team had hoped to make their first pit stop, but you take advantage of the yellow. Allison already taking on a full tank of fuel. They wanted it to be about lap 29. So they're about nine laps too soon. They made a front wing adjustment. They added a little front wing to your leader's car. Well, they got the stop on lap 20. Hear the applause in the pits. It's always great to watch them when they uh, recognize that it was a good stop and everybody in the pit breaks out an applause for the guys. Well, that was a fast stop, and Jack, you were really right there. I think he probably took advantage of that. The track's probably a little slicker than we've seen, and he just wanted to make a fine tune there. He also, to show you how good a shape he's in, he turned down that water bottle. He must be feeling fine. Well, he took the stop on lap 20. About everybody else stayed out, Jack Aroot. Well, one of the reasons why Zanardi won't need a water bottle most of the time, guys, is he has an onboard water supply. It's with a plastic tubing that comes right from the nose of the car, feeds all the way up through the cockpit, and he can take water anytime he wants right through the helmet. Ah, uh, well, strange that they'd offer him. Uh, no, but strange they'd offer him a water bottle knowing that they've got that system on board. So Alex Zanardi comes into the pits as the leader of the race on lap 20, so that resets the way the strategy will be played here now and makes for some interesting probabilities. Jimmy Vassar, teammate, takes the lead behind the PPG pace car, followed by Paul Tracy, Andrew Rivero, and Alex Zanardi. Uh, Parker Johnstone headed for the pits. By the way, Emerson Fittipaldi also made a stop under that yellow. And Eddie Lawson's car has been picked up now with severe damage to the car. Obviously, Lawson is out of the race, but the good news is there's no indication at all that he was injured in any way. We'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. 